What is up, eternally disappointed family and friends? Welcome to uh, a quick Thursday evening podcast. Um, let's just get right to it. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the Cowboys Chargers game. Now, in my previous video, I said that quite a few people were picking the Chargers. I think the Chargers are overrated. I think Justin Herbert is overrated. I think that uh, Brandon Staley is extremely overrated, and he's probably going to get fired at the end of the year. And let's just put this into perspective. The Chargers were coming off of a bye, playing on Monday night against a team that just got 42 hung on them in a primetime game the week before. And the best that they could do is 17 points. Couldn't even score a... One score per quarter. He scored three times. Um, Brandon Staley's an idiot. I understand that there are times that you go forward and fourth down, but in a game when you've had trouble moving the ball and you're down by three points, you kick the field goal and take the points. He should have tied it at 10, but he went for it and didn't get it. And when he went for it, the defense of Dallas knew that he was that they were limited on what plays they could run because of the injury to Herbert's non-throwing hand. Not his throwing hand, but his non-throwing hand. And it was just a crap show. The Chargers are not a good team. Justin Herbert is 27 and 27. He's a 500 quarterback. Staley will be fired at the end of the year. It's it's really sad to see that this is the team that this is the time that you could be taking over the Chiefs to win that division. Like there's no better time than this year. And they crapped the bed as usual. The Chargers are not a good team. I knew they weren't going to beat the Cowboys, who will play the Rams next after a bye. I, I, for some reason, I always feel like Dallas is a bad matchup for the Rams. They always seem to have success against them. I think I give the Rams a little bit better of a chance to beat Dallas, but not a huge chance, but a little bit bigger of a chance um, because Dallas is one of those up-and-down inconsistent teams. I could see the Rams coming away with a victory on that, and I can see Dallas going 0-4 against the NFC West uh, this year. But uh, just like I said on when I filmed this on Monday night, Dallas was going to beat the Chargers, and so we have to give a big congratulations to the Cowboys, who have finally got a victory over a team with more than one win on the season. Great job, Dallas. Now I get to hear your insufferable idiot fans talk about how you're Super Bowl favorites for the next two weeks because they never shut up. All right. Big fights this weekend in the UFC. Big fights. I'm going to go over Usman and Shemaya. This is a fight that I can see going one of two ways. I can see Shemaev being one step ahead of Usman, and basically it's almost like the second time St. Pierre fought Matt Hughes, where it was the, the wrestler that learned how to strike and became a champion was finally outgunned by the younger, more athletic guy who learned how to wrestle and strike, even though St. Pierre came from a striking background first, his wrestling is ridiculous. And in the second fight with Hughes, he was just so far ahead on everything. and just He was in and out of the pocket so fast. If you look at Usman, the way he's fought in the last few years, the threat of his takedowns have been more relevant in fights than his actual takedowns. I can't remember the last time I saw him lower his level and shoot in the middle of the cage to take somebody down. What he's done is he's good at basically underhooking people to the fence and clinching there and then dropping for takedowns against the fence. And that happens as you become an older fighter. You don't have the same skill set you did when you were 10 years younger. So you adjust to get people in the same position. When you're 25, you can blast double leg people. When you're 35, you clinch them run them to the fence, drop for a single, take them down. You still end up in the same position you wanted to get. You just took a different route to get there. And I can see a situation where Shemaev is just, it's its the younger, more athletic guy who is, is going to take over the guy who's fading into the sunset eventually as Usman's career winds down. I can see that happening. I can see that happening with 49% confidence. The 51% confidence I have is this. And I'm going to sidetrack for a second. I've never been a guy who jumped on many bandwagons as far as being a fight fan. I never thought Conor McGregor was as good as advertised, and I thought the UFC gave him easy stylistic matchups to make him look good. I've thought the same about Sean O'Malley. I've thought the same about a lot of people. I never got on McGregor's bandwagon. I knew that the UFC altered divisions to make McGregor look better than he is, and finally he had to face the big boys, and most of the time he came up short. I did get on the Shemaev bandwagon, hype train, whatever you want to call it. 
I really thought Shemaev was that good until the second minute of the Burns fight. Then I realized that Shemaev has no fight intelligence. He's just super talented and fights like an idiot. He should have had a crystal clear, easy victory against Gilbert Burns. And I like Gilbert Burns. I respect the shit out of Gilbert Burns. I think he's too small for 70 and too big for 55. I think he, he's a perfect, him and Masvidal are perfect candidates for 65. But the UFC won't do it for some reason. I don't know why. But I think Shemaev could have had an easy night against Burns. And instead, he went and, and fought like an amateur. Like, he just let his emotion get to him, and he went out there and went crazy. Same with his fight with Holland. Like, he just went guns blazing at, at the very beginning of the fight, and, and he got the submission. But the question's always, like, what would have happened if Holland got back to his feet? And Shemaev probably would have been a little bit gassed. I can see a situation more likely happening than the first one, where Shemaev comes out, guns blazing, trying to really just go after and get the kill. And Usman is talented enough for sure and has just enough athleticism enough to stay with Shemaev, not get put in a bad spot. And then as Shemaev wears down, Usman takes over the fight and either gets a late finish or a crystal clear 29-28 victory by basically winning the last two rounds, putting pressure, being the guy that's in I don't want to say better shape, but less fatigue because he's he's um, conserved his energy a little bit better. That's what I see happening more likely. Um, I will say I think that if Shemaev gets a clean takedown and a good position, like what Leon Edwards did the second time him and Usman fought when he got him down in the first round, if that happens, Usman's fucked because Shemaev will not attack him like Edwards did. Shemaev will try to rip his fucking head off. And Usman, I think, is good enough to not get caught up there yet. I think in a couple of fights, he wouldn't be able to. I would love to see Shemaev come out and stay calm, composed, and then make something happen. He has the ability to do it. He just has to be able to do it in a fight. And sometimes it takes experience, man. Fighting is a crazy game. Competing is a crazy game. Um, but that's what I see happening. I wouldn't be surprised if Shemaev comes out there and runs through him, but I don't see that happening. I see Usman weathering the storm like a real true veteran overtaking the fight in the second and third round, and I think that's the exact lesson Shemayev needs. But maybe he learned his lesson from the Gilbert Burns fight. We'll see. Volkanovski and Makachev. I hate the fact that this fight is happening again. I like both guys. I'm a super big fan of Volkanovski. I hated watching their first fight. I hated the fact that I have to rewatch it to be able to give you guys an analysis of what I think is going to happen in this fight. I think that there it's if you look at a lot of the guys that Khabib fought and a lot of the guys that Islam fights, they don't do a lot of rematches. And when you fight guys like them that you know have a unique wrestling and grappling ability, there's always questions in your mind. Because you never know what's going to happen when you end up in a situation where you have to scramble with them and you have to grapple with them. You don't know how strong they're going to be. You don't know how fast they're going to be. You don't know where they're going to be. That's not the case in this fight. 25 minutes of fighting each other, and Volkanovski knows exactly what he's getting into now. He knows that he can take a few more risks on the feet because his, his counter grappling will, he's not going to get held down, and it's, I don't see him really getting submitted. Um, not to say that it can't, but he's so good. I think Volkanovski is going to come out in this fight 5% more aggressive than he was in the previous fight. He's going to be 5% more aggressive in the right spots, and I think he finishes Makachev. That's a big, bold prediction to make on a fight that seems so 50-50. But Volkanovski's so good. And, and I think that Makachev is a better striker than people think, because people think that Makachev and Khabib are the same. They're totally different. They're not even built the same. And Makachev probably has that thudding power where he hits you, it just kind of makes you do that. Not like a whip, like where it cracks and you're like, oh my God, that hurt. But he just thuds you because he knocked out guys that I've trained with before that have cinder block heads. So, so I think Makachev has better power when it comes to striking. I think he's better than people give him credit for because they associate him with Khabib. But I think Volkanovski's striking is two levels above his. Volkanovski is so good. Volkanovski is, is one of the very few fighters that you look at him and then you don't immediately think of a certain type of style. You look at a guy like Jiri Prohoshka and you think of a great kickboxer. Same with Adesanya. 
you look at Usman, and even though most of Usman's last fights have been won on the feet, you think of him as a wrestler because his wrestling is what really got him to be where he is now. You think, look at Shamayev, and you're like, oh, that guy's a great wrestler. Volkanovski's so good everywhere, nothing stands out. Nothing doesn't stand out because he's a jack of all trades. Nothing stands out because he's a master of everything. He's a fault. He's a he's a he's a high volume power puncher, with great stamina. That has terrific takedown defense. He's unsubmittable, and unless you're many weight classes above him, you're pretty much not going to knock him out. This fight, I I'm going to go on the limb and say that I think Volkanovski gets the victory. I think he's five percent more aggressive in the right spots, and what he missed out on the last time, he won't miss out on this time. Because he doesn't need a feeling out process. He knows exactly how strong Makashev is. He knows exactly how he moves. He knows how he fares with him on the ground. He knows that he's not going to get stuck in a shit position like other guys who would be aggressive and get stuck in a shit position and have that, oh my God moment. Like this guy's, wow, like levels above what I thought he is. I'm not looking forward to the fight from a fan's perspective of being a fan of both guys, but as a fan of the sport, I can't wait for this weekend. I can't wait for Shamaya Usman and I can't wait for Makachev and Volkanovsky. I will say this, and Makachev made a good point. The last time they fought in Abu Dhabi, which was Makachev and Oliveira, that fight was nighttime Abu Dhabi time. So it was early in the afternoon um, time in the U.S. for the pay-per-view. In the, the fight that Volk had with Makachev in Australia, they were fighting like 5 in the morning on Sunday. And yes, I know it was both of them, but what have I said before? If you're fighting at an odd time or a time you're not used to, even though both guys are doing it, some people adapt differently to it. I'm curious to see if Makachev looks a lot better fighting in a more natural time than he did when they fought in Australia. I'm just curious because I believe this card starts early, which makes this weekend so much better because I don't have to wait until one in the morning to start getting results and seeing the fights that I really want to see. So, um, like I said, the Usman Shamayev one is a toss up. Either Shamayev is just one step ahead in his athleticism, his athleticism and youth are too much for Usman's talent because Usman is known for having bad knees and he's a little bit older, so his wrestling isn't what it used to be from the explosiveness perspective. Or Usman's just going to weather the storm and then wear him down late and finish him in the third or just get a 29-28 decision. I'm calling Volk in the uh, Volk with a finish. I don't know how I could see some nice ground and pound, a similar finish to, to the way that he finished on um, Jair Rodriguez. So... It's going to be a wild one, and I can't wait to comment on it on the next podcast, probably Monday. Until then, stay frosty, motherfuckers, and see you on the other side.